I'm going to show you how to ride a motorcycle and your motorcycle may not even look nothing like that bike and you fall off or worse hold on and run into something and don't get discouraged by the weight of a motorcycle because it doesn't really matter that much okay guys if you're doing that congratulations this is what it sounds like when you give it way too much gas What good is it to own a motorcycle you can't and you're limited to customizing it? That's why Discount ESP is a great motorcycle warranty company that covers customized motorcycles. Make sure that you check out the link in the description below for Discount ESP, who happens to be the sponsor for today's video. Let's go. So today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to ride this motorcycle, ride a motorcycle. This happens to be a 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. I'm gonna show you how to ride a motorcycle and your motorcycle may not even look nothing like that bike. Now, this is almost an 860 pound motorcycle. And for most of you, when you go to a dealership, your first time of sitting on a motorcycle and lifting it up off the kickstand, you get overwhelmed. And most of them are not 860 pounds like this big Harley here. Some of them are just like 300 pounds or 400 pounds or even less than that. And don't get discouraged by the weight of a motorcycle because it doesn't really matter that much. I know you're wondering, what do I mean by that? Let's get on it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First of all, I'm gonna grab a clutch right here. Grab the front brake. Don't worry if you don't know where that is yet. I'll go over all that in just a moment. Lift the motorcycle up and sit down on the bike. I'm balancing a 860 pound motorcycle from the factory. If it has a tour pack on the back, it weighs more. Stuff in the saddlebags, it weighs more, right? But I'm balancing this bike. And you see I have this foot on the ground, this foot on the ground, and my hands on the handlebars, on the grips. The reason why some people are intimidated by heavy motorcycles is because they're thinking they're have, they have to hold this bike up the whole time that they're riding. You don't hold the motorcycle up when you're riding. Once you get over five, 10 miles per hour, this bike is gonna balance itself. So the only time you're dealing with all this weight is getting it off the kickstand or being at the stoplight. Now, you go, you gotta stop. Stopping is important, right? No doubt. If, when you stop a motorcycle at the stop sign or stoplight or just stop in general, it's important for you to have the motorcycle straight up and down. Some people will put one foot up on this side, on your right side, and the leave the left foot down, but they still have their motorcycle straight up and down. I put both feet down. I'm six foot six. I have no problem with uh, tiptoeing or whatever. I'm, I'm flat footed with a bend in my knees and it's not an issue. My sister rides her Harley. She's a lot shorter than I am. And that's the key to riding a big bike, making sure that when you come to a stop, you have the motorcycle straight up and down, not with the wheels turned. Because when I'm turning this wheel to the left, that motorcycle wants to fall left. When I'm turning it to the right, it wants to fall right. And here's the thing, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that strong. I can't hold up an 860 pound motorcycle once this bike gets too far over this way, it's going on the ground, okay? Gets too far over this way without the kickstand down, it's going on the ground. So unless you are bench pressing or squatting a thousand pounds, I would say you probably can't hold it up either uh, once it gets over too far. So the key is don't let it get over that far when you're sitting still. That's why it's important for you to come to a stop with the motorcycle completely straight and the bars completely straight. And that's how you manage a big bike. Now, those things, how I leaned it over a little bit to the right and leaned it over a little bit to the left, that comes from learning my bike, knowing if I get it over too far, I can't lift this thing back up. So I don't lean it over that far and put all that weight on one side so the bike to fall over. So I suggest you don't lean your bike over that far and put all that weight on one side for the bike to fall over. 
always stop with the bike straight up and the wheels straight. And if you do that and you get acclimated to your motorcycle by riding it over time, over and over and over, then you will be more comfortable on your bike and then the weight of this motorcycle won't even be an issue at all. You can ride an 860 pound motorcycle for a person on the back of it and as long as you know that you keep it straight, it's not a problem. The problem is when you get it over one side too far one way or the other, then that's your chances of it going down. If you went to the dealership and thought it was too heavy for you, you're always going to feel that way if it's new to you, but afterwards you don't even think about it. All right. Okay, guys, now we've switched over to first person view. Now I'm going to show you how to ride this motorcycle. I'm going to go around it and then I'm going to sit on it. Then I'll go over in greater details what the controls do. This is your rear brake. This is your front brake. This is your throttle. Walking around the bike. Here is your uh, clutch. And here is your shifter. Back to the front of the bike real fast. One side. The left side, if you're standing in front of the bike looking at it, is your high side. The low side is your kickstand side. So now let's get into it. I'm going to grab the clutch, throw my leg over the motorcycle, grab the front brake, and sit down, lifting the motorcycle up. I didn't have to lift it up this time. So actually, I'm going to put it back on the, on the kickstand, a.k.a. Jiffy Stand for Harley-Davidson riders. That's what it's called. Now, right here beyond this big old air cleaner, that's what that is, you can see that rear brake. This is the rear brake, remember? So, I'm gonna be real repetitive, but just stay with me. So, I'm putting my foot on my footboard. In your case, you might have a foot peg to rest your foot on, and then your brake, it probably will look like a little peg too, but that is the rear brake for a Harley. Now, here's an exercise we're gonna do, the first exercise. When I say rear brake, I want you to take your foot, put it on the brake, apply pressure, and when I say off, just let it off. Real simple, let's go. Rear brake, off. Rear brake, off. Rear brake, off. And as I'm doing that, I wanna tell you this. Everything with a motorcycle needs to be smooth. That is the key, smooth is the key. You do not wanna do anything abrupt or rough because that makes the difference. If you apply more pressure to the brake, you have, you'll be able to, you know, the more pressure, pressure you apply, the more stopping power you're trying to uh, apply. Now, if you do it, just step, step on it like that, then you can lock up the rear wheel if it doesn't have ABS. So you wanna be smooth, brake. All right, you ready? Rear brake, off. Rear brake, off. Rear brake off. Now I want you to do that at least 15 more times, but in the interest of this video, in the interest of time for this video, we're not going to do that uh, that many more times. But you do it so many times that you know exactly where it is without looking down. You don't need to look down. You know where it is. Soon as you want to hit that rear brake, you know exactly where it is and how it feels. Now we're going to keep the bike on the kickstand and we're going up to the front brake right here. This is the front brake. You see, I hope my camera is showing the right angle, front brake. So what I'm gonna do, when I say front brake, I want you to squeeze the front brake. Now I'm gonna use these two fingers right here. I got my hand on my throttle, but my throttle is not turned back. It's resting on the throttle, and I'm gonna use these two fingers to squeeze the front brake without twisting the throttle back, right? So hand rested on here. If you have small hands, you might have to use all your hand, but I use these two fingers right here so here we go, front brake, off, front brake, off, front brake, off, front brake, off, front brake, off. It's important to be super smooth on the front brake. You want to apply the proper amount of pressure. Stab it on the front brake like that, can lock up that front wheel. You lock up that front wheel, it's way different than locking up the rear wheel. You're going down more than likely if you lock up that front wheel. One way or the other, left or right. So do not overly stab on that front brake. You want to be smooth. Let's do it a couple more times. Front brake, off. 
front brake off. Do that 10, 15 more times so you know exactly where the front brake is. Now, let's get off this bike. Just a second, walk around just a second. Let me show you. So that's the front brake again. That's the rear brake. Now this is what I'm going to do. I am going to tell you to brake because on a motorcycle, your stopping power is on the front brake. The, most of your stopping power is on the front brake, okay? I'm going to show you how to properly brake. So we're going to hit the rear brake first and then we're going to hit the front brake, all right? And when I say off, let both of them off. Clutch, front brake. You'll understand why I do that later. You ready? Foot on the foot peg or foot board down here, getting ready. Hand on the, uh, on the uh, handlebars up here without turning the throttle back, getting ready. Okay, brake. What you wanna do, rear brake, then front brake. You got me? Brake. Rear brake, then front brake. Hold it, let it off. Now, I'm not saying no rear brake and front brake anymore. You'll see that I'm, well, I'll do it one more time. Brake, rear brake, front brake. Let them off, you're letting both of them off. Here we go again. Brake, rear, front. Hold them, now let them off. You wanna be smooth, rear, front. Not front, rear, you definitely want rear slows you down then front gives you that really good stopping power so next thing let's lift the bike up got both feet on the ground now you can leave the kickstand down but we got both feet on the ground and i want to show you the clutch this is the clutch right here on the left side now this is the thing that you have to be super smooth at the clutch pulling the clutch in and letting the clutch out you want to make sure you have the clutch pulled in while you are braking in this situation. Other situations, you'll see that you won't do it that way. But in the beginner situation, that's the way you do it. I tend to do it this way. I tend to hit the rear brake to slow myself down, got that clutch pulled in, and then I go to the front brake. So I go from rear being one, clutch being two, and holding it in, and then front being third. You'll find your way of doing it. There's probably a proper way of doing it, but it's just like in seconds, in milliseconds, I'm like, rear brake, clutch, front brake, just like that, you know. And honestly, probably faster than I can actually say that. So when you're coming to a stop, you wanna pull that clutch in when you hit the brakes, all right? Now, and if you don't get it yet, you will get what I'm saying. It'll all make sense to you, I promise you, if you just keep on watching the video. All right, so now let's talk about starting a motorcycle. Now, again, this is a Harley. It's gonna start a little bit different than your motorcycle. But a Harley Davidson, most of the newer ones do not have keys um, like you, like a traditional motorcycle will have a key. On a Harley, it has a key fob. So on a Harley, you'll have a key fob. It's a proximity key. As long as you're close to the bike, all you have to do is hit the kill switch right here, the stop run switch, not kill switch, the stop run switch right here. And then Harley has integrated it where you actually hit that again and it starts. Most motorcycles will have a stop run switch and then an actual start button. So if your bike has that, you hit the uh, stop run switch, you turn it on run, and then you hit the start button. But you want to make sure that the motorcycle is in neutral. Now, how do you make sure that the motorcycle is in neutral? We go down here to the shift lever on the left side right here. This is your shift lever. On a shift lever, this motorcycle is a six-speed motorcycle. That means there's one gear down, a slight pull up is neutral, and then second, third, fourth, and fifth keeps pulling up. Now, I have the motorcycle in first. I'm gonna go up one slight pull here. That's neutral. You see that end right there? It's gonna be neutral. Now, on your motorcycle, it might have a neutral indicator somewhere, but I never ever trust a neutral indicator. Just because it says neutral, I still always make sure I have the clutch pulled in and the front brake applied when I start the motorcycle. So I'm gonna get this motorcycle off this jiffy stand and then I'm gonna start it here. 
And that's how it starts. That's how you start a Harley Davidson. Well, a newer Harley Davidson, 2024. All right, guys, so if you made it this far, you are really close to getting the motorcycle moving. It, you probably think, wow, I haven't even really did anything yet. Well, you've done a lot more than what you think, okay? So we are at the step of now of getting this motorcycle moving. So let me show you. We're going to start the bike here. Got the clutch pulled in. The bike's in neutral, but I keep the clutch pulled in, hold the front brake anyway. And the reason why I do that, because if it gives a false neutral and it's in first, the clutch pulled in, it's going nowhere. The front brake, if the clutch, whatever, is still just going to not surge for it because you have the front brake held. And um, yeah, it's like a safety measure. That's why I always do it that way. Because sometimes I have the motorcycle started while I'm sitting on the kickstand and I get on, I want to squeeze that front brake and hold that, I mean, squeeze that clutch and hold that front brake because if I accidentally kick the shifter, I don't want the bike to go surging forward. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to put the bike in first. We're going to go all the way down in first. First is below neutral. As we go down, we're going to hold the clutch in. Now keep in mind, when the bike is in gear, if you let this clutch out, you're going to go forward. If you accidentally let the clutch out, the bike's going to jerk, jump, or whatever, and go for it. And it may even end up in those woods over there. <laughs> so you want to be careful with what you're doing, right? This is the time. Well, it's always time to be careful. Be careful, right? So we're going gra to grab this clutch, and we're going to put it down in first, just like that. I put it in first. I got both my feet on the ground again. My feet are not up yet. Yet. Feet are on the ground. So now let me show you what I'm going to do. Concentrate on this clutch side. I'm not giving it any gas but I'm gonna have my hand over here, just holding on to the bars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let out on the clutch and once I feel the bike move forward a little bit, I'm not letting the clutch out all the way. When I feel the bike moving forward a little bit, then I'm gonna pull the clutch back in. I'm talking about move forward like one wheel forward, half a wheel forward, you ready? Watch this, I'm trying to concentrate on that, here we go. Pull it back in, just like that. Now you want to be on a flat surface, okay? You ready? Let's do it again. Let it out. Pull it back in. We're going to do that like three more times. We're going to let it out. Easy, easy, easy. It's rolling. Pull it back in. We're going to let it out. Easy. Pull it back in. Now here's the thing. If I let it out too fast, it's going to either take off or jerk and die. Okay? So what you want to do is, again, be smooth. Let it out. Easy. Pull it back in. Now, if you did that, perfect. If you didn't, keep practicing. Matter of fact, you just keep practicing doing that for a while. Okay? Until you get the feel of that clutch. All right. I got the clutch pulled in. I'm going to find neutral. There you go. Got it in neutral. I'm going to put it on the kickstand. And I'm going to turn it off. So that was good. So we just went probably about one wheel length. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go further. We are going to do that same exercise and we are going to go probably one bike length further without using the gas on a flat surface. Let's get on the bike here. Start her up, kickstand up, clutch pulled in. It's in neutral, put it down at first. Now, no gas, hand off the front brake, both feet down, head out on the clutch. Not all the way. Okay, pull it in. Now, you might have to stop yourself with the front brake this time because, you know, stop yourself from rolling. Now, I told you, you used both brakes, but for that purpose, you can just stop with the front brake. But easy, not hard, easy. Okay, we're gonna do that again. We're running out of uh, pavement here. Clutch out, not all the way out, keeping my hand on the clutch, bike rolling, bike rolling, clutch pulled in, front, okay. Let me turn this way, because I went too far. Went too far. All right, you ready to go again? Clutch out, 
Not all the way out. Keep your hand still on the clutch. All right, stop. You can use that front brake to stop. Don't try to stop with the rear brake. Keep both feet down. And you'll never hear me say that after we get to a certain point because it's important that you keep your feet up because it's dangerous to keep your feet down on a motorcycle. Let's go again. Let the clutch out, clutch out. Let the bike roll, pull the clutch in, stop. You're not stopped with the front brake. Now, I did not use this throttle yet. So I'm gonna turn the bike off. Let's talk about the throttle. All right, so a throttle on a motorcycle is the gas pedal on a car, basically. What you do is you the further you twist this thing back, the faster you, the motor goes. Not the faster you go, yeah, it's sort of the faster you go, but uh, there's a lot to that. But the further you twist it back, the more gas you give it, the accelerator, that's what it is, an accelerator. So when you twist that throttle back further, you're giving it more gas for you can go faster or have more power to the motor by twisting this throttle back. Remember again, the throttle is on the right side, but we're gonna put the motorcycle in first and then we are going to let out on this clutch like we've been doing, but this time we're gonna give it a little bit of throttle. So what is a little bit of throttle? I'm glad you asked, because that is the hardest thing for me to teach what a little bit of throttle is. But I'm gonna try my best. So just stay with me, it will make sense. Okay, so I'm gonna start the bike. Matter of fact, I'm gonna leave it on the kickstand and I'm gonna put it in neutral. Start it up here. I'm gonna find neutral right here with the bike off, clutch pulled in. Gonna go one slight pull up to neutral. It's in neutral. Pull that clutch in, hit that front brake, and I'm gonna hit start. Okay, so the bike didn't surge for it, so I believe it's really in neutral. And that is not a thing with these Harleys, okay guys? It's just something that I did from riding bikes years ago when they would give you false neutrals. So the bike is started, it's on the kickstand. That's what it sounds like at idle. Remember I told you about the throttle? Gives it gas. This is what it sounds like when you give it gas. Right? Now I'm gonna do this only one time for you guys. I need a thumbs up just for doing this one thing. This is what it sounds like when you give it way too much gas. Well, actually, uh, it's governed to, to shut down from over revving like that, which is not a bad thing, but that was too much gas. So you don't want to be at that point. You want to be just a little bit on the gas, just barely on that gas, just enough gas to make sure this motorcycle is moving forward. Too much gas, you can do a such thing as whiskey throttle, which would make the bike, you, you know, you could possibly pop a wheelie, bike, do whatever, get out of control and, and leave you. And you fall off or worse, hold on and run into something. So what you wanna do, here we go. We're gonna get on this bike and I'm gonna show you. Now this is something that you have to do bike specific. You will learn what your bike sounds like, how much gas you need, determining how like, if you're going uphill or downhill or, or whatever, you will determine how much gas you need for your, your weight size or whatever but it's important that you stay in tune with your bike by listening to it and the feel of it. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull the clutch in, got it in first, of course I'm off the kickstand, and now, you remember this? The throttle, we're gonna let out on the clutch. I'm gonna hold the throttle back a little bit, and when I let out on the clutch, I am actually gonna let the clutch out completely this time, my hand completely off of the clutch, and usually I don't do that. I usually just let it rest on the clutch without squeezing it in. But for this purpose, I'm being over dramatic, showing you how it works. So I'm going to let out on the clutch and give it a throttle at the same time. If I don't give it enough throttle, it's going to chug or surge, I mean, chug like that and then die. So I got to give it just enough throttle. Too much throttle can hurt you. Not enough throttle, the bike can chug and it can fall over. So we're going to do both at the same time, letting out on the clutch, and I'm giving a little throttle like that. And now, see that? That's how you do it, okay? 
a little bit of gas. You see, I wasn't like, I wasn't like that, right? I wasn't like that. I had my hand on the clutch. I'm letting out on the clutch, giving it a little bit of gas, let, let out on the clutch slow, smooth on the gas, smooth on the clutch, and get moving forward, okay? Now, this exercise, let me put it in neutral and tell you this real fast. Kickstand down. On a flat surface, by the way, I mean, you don't want to put a kickstand down having a neutral on a surface that's not flat or you'll go chase your bike. Your bike will go rolling down the hill. Give me 10 seconds of your time. If you have a motorcycle, you're going to have to change the oil in your motorcycle. And the best oil that I run in all my motorcycles is Redline Synthetic Oils. So if you want the best oil for your motorcycle, check out Redline Oils. And I'll put a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. You remember where I told you you have to pick your feet up when you're riding a motorcycle? Well, the time has come. You got to pick your feet up. When this thing gets moving at a speed, I don't know, five miles per hour, you'll know when it's balanced. Pick your feet up. You cannot, you, put, dragging your feet is not helping anything on a motorcycle. I see people dragging their feet going through a parking lot or duck walking, whatever. Make sure you pick your feet up when the motorcycle gets moving. I'm not saying when it's moving two miles per hour, but when it gets moving, you pick your feet up and I'll let you know when I pick my feet up for this exercise. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold the clutch in, put it in first, get the gas, give it a little gas, let the clutch out at the same time and as the bike gets moving, let the clutch all the way out, keeping the throttle held slightly and we're gonna get the bike moving on its own and after the bike gets moving on its own, what we're gonna do is roll off the throttle, pull the clutch back in, put my foot on the rear brake and my hand on the front brake, come to a stop, get close to coming to a stop, take my foot off of the brake, off of the footboards and on to the ground to balance the bike. I'll say that one more time, then I'll do it. Clutch pulled in, first gear, throttle, Roll back, clutch out, clutch all the way out, throttle, moving the bike, getting ready. I'm rolling forward. Now I'm letting off of the gas, clutch pulled back in, rear brake, slowing down more, rear brake, front brake, slowing down more. It's time to put my feet down, taking my feet off the brake putting my feet onto the ground, hand still on the front brake, and I'm stopped. Let's go. It sounds way more complicated than what I'm actually doing. Don't get overwhelmed by that. It really is, it's way more complicated. You ready? I'm gonna say everything out loud what I'm doing. Kick stand up, clutch pulled in, first gear, hand on the throttle, hand on the clutch, that out on the clutch. Gas rolling, clutch pulled out. Clutch pulled in, back brake, front brake, slowed down a lot, feet down. Let's do it again. Let me turn around. Okay, you ready? Clutch out, gas, clutch completely out. Clutch pulled in, rear brake, front brake, almost stopped, feet down. Front brake still held, front clutch, I mean the clutch still held. Let's do it again. You ready? First gear, clutch out, gas, clutch completely out. Clutch pulled in, rear brake, front brake, feet down. There we go, just like that. Remember, stop straight up and down, not with the wheel turned. All right, go one more time. Okay, here we go. Look at me, start stopping with the wheel, not straight. Ready, let's do it again. Clutch pulled in. Oh, I'm in first gear. Clutch pulled in, 
gas, let him clutch out, clutch out, clutch completely out. Clutch pulled in, rear brake, front brake, feet down, hold the front brake, hold the clutch. There you go. Okay guys, if you're doing that, congratulations. You have the motorcycle moving, you're in gear, you know how to apply the brake, you know how to use the clutch, you are doing a fantastic job. So congratulations. Practice that, practice that, practice. Now I can tell you some advanced stuff later on that where you would actually uh, have the clutch halfway pulled in, dragging the rear brake, just other stuff when you're, anyway, we'll get into that in another video if you guys want to see that. But we got to go a step further because I said this is a six speed, one down, five up. So it has six gears. Now we're not going to get in all six gears in the parking lot, but how do you know when to change it to the other gears? Well, it goes by feel and by sound. If you have a tachometer, some people do that, but even when I had a bike with a tachometer, like my sport bikes, I would never look. I would always go by feel and sound when to change the gears. A lot of dirt bikes don't have things where you have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of bikes don't have tachometers where you can see the RPMs and when you need to change. And you can't rely on that anyway because the road might be, it might be a hill, it might be uphill, downhill or whatever. You might, there's, there's so many variables that it can be, uh, so yeah. You can't rely on that. So don't just solely rely on that. So let me show you or tell you, and then I'll give you a demonstration on what you need to do. All right, you remember when I told you about the throttle? You don't want to give it too much and you don't want to give it too little because it'll start lagging and you start jumping or whatever. So you want to, you remember when you was a kid and you mimicked a sports car, you did that whole thing uh, uh, uh. Well, the reason why you did that, because that's the sound of a car or motorcycle makes when it's changing gears. So what you want to do is keep that in your mind and you want to change gears on this motorcycle before it gets revved up too high, but you don't want to change gears when it's not revved up enough. It's a fine line. And that's something that you will learn after spending some time in the parking lot on your motorcycle, riding your motorcycle, okay? And to get into the upper gears, you probably won't be able to do it in the parking lot. I'm not telling you to break any laws by any means. I'm saying just there might be in a, somewhere where you, an open area where you can ride and getting to the higher gears, okay? Just to do a quick recap, rear brake, front brake, throttle, clutch, shift lever. Shift lever is one down, neutral, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Unless you got five. First, neutral, second, third, fourth, fifth. And you might even have four. You, you know, I don't have to do that. Basically, you're not going to go to fifth and sixth. All right, we'll stop right here. Now, let's see if I can get it into second gear. I know I can. So. Let's get it in the second right here. Are you ready? First gear, hand on the clutch, hand on the throttle. Let out the clutch, let out, I mean, roll back the throttle. Feet up, all the way out. Second gear, pull it in, pull it up. All right. Now, braking again, going down to first gear, and now feet down. Did you see that? I pulled it in, pulled it up, and then when I went to go back down the first gear, I pulled the clutch back in and then stepped down on it and it came to a stop. Let's do it again. I'm in first gear and let's go. Let's go back. Well, we'll turn around right here and do it, do it right here. You ready? Here we go. Roll it back. Let the clutch out completely. I'm going to concentrate on this right here. Pull the clutch in, pull that up, let it out. Pull the clutch in. Pull it down. That was very rough because I'm running out of real estate here. Front brake now, feet down. Yeah, that wasn't too smooth because I was running out of space and I'm looking down to show you guys. <laughs> All right, let's do it one more time. 
all the way out, pull it in, shift it up. All right, clutch pull it in, rear brake, clutch, front brake, feet down. All right, you guys, you feel confident about that? Okay, perfect, let's turn this off. Hopefully, you practice that several more times. Continue to practice that, getting it from first to second, back down to first. I was going to let you hear what it sounds like when I should change into second, but I failed to change into second. So I'm going to let it rev up a little too much on one pass. And then the next pass, I'm going to not let it rev up enough and shift into second. All right, you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so here we go, let's go. Well, <laughs> I ca I'm kind of running out of space, but did you hear? I should have been then shifted, unless I'm on a drag strip, but I should have shifted a lot sooner than that. I shouldn't have been on the throttle that much anyway in a small space like this but I should have shifted a lot sooner than that. Did you hear that? And guys, we are limited because of this space. But I hope you hear what it sound like there. Now let me show you when I'm shifting way too soon. Let's do that, here we go. Yeah, you, did you feel that? That was shifting a second way too soon. Way too soon. Feel that little stutter? Now you can take off in second. On, I've done it a thousand times from a red light on accident, but it's not ideal um, by using the clutch, letting the clutch out slower or whatever and giving a little bit more gas until you get going. But that's not what you're supposed to do. Again, what you're supposed to do to end it on a positive note, what we're gonna do is let the clutch out, roll back the throttle, clutch completely out, gear, Rear brake, clutch, skip down, front brake. And I don't know why I chose to do it in that order that time, just sometimes I, I do it that way. But the main thing is, you know you gotta pull that clutch in when you're coming to a stop. Cause if you don't pull that clutch in when you're coming to a stop, then you will come down to a slow speed, 10 miles per hour, whatever, and you're still in, in uh, uh, gear, you're gonna, the bike's gonna be chugging, when you jerking when you come to a stop and die on you. All right? All right. All right, guys, so if you made it to that point, congratulations, I'm proud of you. I think that it's amazing that you're learning how to ride a motorcycle. I'm making this video free of charge. Anybody who wants to see this video, whether you know how to ride a motorcycle, you are interested, you are just somewhat curious, this video is available for you to watch and you can send it and share it with anybody who is interested in riding a motorcycle or anybody that you want to be interested in riding a motorcycle. The whole reason why I'm making this video is because I want you to know the joy and the freedom of riding a motorcycle on cross country road trips. There is no other, there's no better way of traveling than riding a motorcycle. It's just on a whole nother level. And if I can share that gift with you guys to encourage you to get out and ride your motorcycle, I've ridden across country several times. I've been from Tennessee to California several times. I've been from up north down to Key West. I've been on several road trips by myself. I've been two up. I've been with a group and I want to encourage you that if you have an interest in riding a motorcycle, get out and take a trip on a bike. You will have an experience like no other. It is just amazing. So that is my motive for making this video. So guys, if you would, if you want to share the movement of traveling on two wheels and getting out, taking trips on motorcycles, make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell and share this video. Put it on all your social media platforms to share the video. I am not the authority on knowing how to ride a motorcycle, but I have over 41 years experience on riding motorcycles from Harley Davidson's 
to a thousand cc sport bikes i like riding motorcycles and this is by far my favorite way of traveling and if you're interested in traveling videos make sure you check out the youtube channel traveling tall click on the videos tab there's over 400 videos with traveling tutorials test rides and product reviews my favorite videos are the traveling videos so check those out again if you made it this far congratulations continue your training with the motorcycle safety course do not just think this is enough for you to learn to get out there and ride your motorcycle. This can help you know a little bit, feel a little bit more comfortable when you do show up at the course, but take a course from a professional where they can teach you the proper methods of riding a motorcycle. But this is how I taught several people how to ride motorcycles. Uh, this is my method. This is how I teach people how to ride motorcycles because I want everybody riding motorcycles, including you and your friends. All right, guys. So I'm gonna end this video here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. There's a whole lot more that I can get into. I guess you would say the next level of it, and then there's a level beyond that. So you make sure that you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and comment below where you're from and what you ride. And if this video has helped you, I want to hear from you in the comment section below. Let me know if it helped. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget, to like, share, and subscribe. Keep gliding, and as always, have a blessed day.